Peace everyone, I'm Mascard here and welcome back once again to a live soft pastel tutorial. Today we are going to be doing some finer details and in this case we're going to be doing some eyes of an owl. I thought this would be a really great opportunity to uh, dive into the Carbothello pastel pencils a little bit more. In the previous projects I only barely reached for my pencils but in this project, it's predominantly going to be used, uh, the pastel pencils are going to be the predominant uh, use here. So real quick, before I uh, start, I want to mention that I have the reference photo and the line art uh, available to download for free. The link is in the description. And the other thing that I wanted to mention was how I got the line art onto my pastel mat. Now one of the things you'll notice is that my pastel mat is not white. And I didn't choose this color for any particular reason. Uh, this drawing is a little bit smaller. It's about half the size of the previous uh, tutorials, simply because if I were to draw this really big, it would take a really long time. Um, so I, I just went with a smaller sheet that I had, and I only had this color and some grays. And I thought this color actually worked uh, quite well with the colors that are present in the uh, reference photo, so this is the reason I chose this color. But on to how I got the line art. So uh, like I mentioned, the line art is free to download, link is in the description. And what I did was I took my line art and drew it on a normal everyday printer piece of paper. There's nothing special whatsoever about this piece of paper. All I did was draw it on the paper at the size that I knew I was going to use for my pastel mat here. So that's what I did. I drew it first using 2B lead, um, just because it's easier for me to sketch with 2B lead. The next step is I flip it over and I take a 6B leaded pencil, so a little bit softer lead, and color over all of my lines on the back side of the piece of paper. And then all I do is I flip it over I lay it onto my pastel mat wherever I want it, tape it down so everything stays put, and then I use a 6H to trace over my sketch, and that will give you this nice transfer onto your pastel mat. Now you don't have to use graphite on the back, but I find that it does work the best and it stays the cleanest. Uh, you could use charcoal, you could even use black pastel. Um, but uh, I've always used graphite and I think it works the best. So if you're wondering how I got my line art onto my pastel mat so cleanly, because you don't really want to spend time sketching on the pastel mat as though it's, it's not the most friendliest thing to, uh, to be erasing and redrawing and erasing. You know, you, you don't want to mess up the tooth of the paper too much with graphite. Anyway, so I just wanted to cover that really quick. Let's dive right into these eyes. And the first color I'm going to start with is a nice bright yellow. Uh, this is the Carbothello 205. I have a nice clean sheet of glassine paper here to hold, to lay my hand down. And I'm just going to do a light layer of this yellow in the eye here, right on the inside of the eye. Now the difference when you're working with the pastel pencils as opposed to the normal soft pastels, and I am going to use a little bit of the uh, the Rembrandt soft pastels that I've been using so far, uh, but I'll get into those a little bit later. The major difference is the density in which these go down. The pencils are a little bit harder, and they don't blend as much with your little blendy stick. They don't spread out as far. So a lot of the blending actually occurs by just using the pencil itself as opposed to laying down a bunch of the pencil and then using a sponge blender to blend it. Most of the blending happens right on the paper with the pencils themselves. So that is one key difference when it comes to using the pencils. But just like uh, the, soft, the soft pastels, you have a lot of room for error with the pencils, so getting some nice colors and getting some soft blends is, is as easy as just layering and taking your time. So I'm going to start with this nice bright yellow here. Just going to cover most of the eye. 
Um, hello, Anna, Jeff, Carmen, Christy, uh, Lynn, uh, Chrissy, Hazard, Wendy. Oh, thank you all so much for coming. I'm so glad to see you here. If uh, if you know of any any good groups, uh, pastel groups or artists, feel free to share the live stream so we can get as many people here as possible. Love to say hello to everybody. And of course, you can always share the uh, tutorial in any of your groups, uh, pastel groups. Maybe a few people will benefit from today's tutorial. That is the goal. That's what I like the most. Uh, I've gotten a lot of wonderful feedback from all of you, and uh, I really, really appreciate that. I, you know, I I wasn't sure how well received the live pastel tutorials were going to be, but you guys have uh, overwhelmingly made it clear to me that uh, this is this is where I should be uh, directing my attention. So I appreciate all that feedback and encouragement, and uh, I, I've been really glad to see all the comments of people saying, you know, I've never tried pastels, but you make me want to try it, and uh, that means I'm doing my job. If I'm if I'm getting people interested in trying pastels, then then I'm doing something right. So thank you everybody for that. Hello, Tracy, uh, Lady Marigold. Good uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are at in the world. Um, I hope everybody had a fantastic weekend, and uh, I did. It was a good weekend, nice and relaxing, so I hope everybody else did as well. Oh, uh, I forgot to mention the color that I'm using now is just a slightly different yellow, and why is there no name on it? Uh, this is 210, so this is the Carbothello 210, and I have the links to all of my supplies that I'm using today in the description. So if you are just curious as to what I'm using, you can always click on those links and have a look. Uh, I also, over on my website, I have a page called Supplies, and it's, it's the supplies that I use for colored pencils, pastels, acrylic painting, so just kind of a, all of my supply lists in one simple place over on my website. And of course, if you don't know by now, I also sell uh, Intro to Pastel course. If uh, you're new to pastels and you want to get started quickly, uh, that course has helped uh, a ton of people, apparently, because they always email me their work and uh, how, how much they enjoyed the course. All right, the next color that I'm using is the 215. And this one, we're gonna get into a little bit of orange here. Just gonna start adding some orange to the eyes. Right around the edge of the color here, it gets into a nice orange, kind of red. So I'm gonna put kind of an orange line all the way around, just to bring in some of that orange there in the crease. And then start adding some oranges up here. And just slowly kind of feather the orange right into the yellow there. You can see that it starts to blend right on the paper. So just do a nice light layer. And speaking of light layers, I am not pressing into this paper at all. I'm letting the paper do all the work. The texture of the paper will uh, pull the color right off the pencil. and So I'm letting the paper do all the work. Barely barely brushing the paper with the pencil. I don't want to leave any indents in the paper at this point because that would make uh, that would make lines in there that you wouldn't be able to hide with other colors because it would be the crease in the paper itself. So don't press too hard. Unlike colored pencils, uh, pastel pencils, they just they just want to stick to the paper whereas colored pencils can be a little stubborn at times. Pastel pencils are not like that. All right, let's get into some darker colors here. So I'm gonna grab this kind of maroon red. This is a 330 pencil color. 
And again, I'm going to go around the edge a little bit. Start coloring in some of these darker colors. Now, I'm not, I'm not worried about all the uh, texture and the detail in this part of the eye yet. I'm kind of just doing some base colors, establishing the lighting a little bit. And then we'll go in there and add some of that fun detail that makes these eyes look super nice and realistic. You'll love doing eyes with, with pastel pencils because they they just they just come out so nice looking. You you almost don't even have to try all that hard to get them to come out looking nice. Okay, so there is this highlight coming like this. So I'm gonna kind of trace around that highlight a little bit. And then this is the darker red stuff here. So I'm just gonna avoid that highlight for now. Add in a little bit. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm always happy to, to take questions as well. And let me know if it's your first time to my live stream. I'd like to say hello. Though I'm I recognize I recognize pretty much everybody in the chat right now. And don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you're enjoying the tutorial and you found it helpful. That just lets me know I'm doing something right. All right, now let's go back to a little bit of brown. So I'm gonna grab this, this brown, this nice chocolate brown. This color is 640. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm just gonna put in a little bit of this right in here. Add some contrast to the top part of the eye. Let's go back to our orange now. Just uh, add some more of this orange to start blending out some of these edges, kind of smoothing out our colors. Again, just keep a, a nice light touch and you'll see, you can see these lines right here that I used, that I created with the red. When you go over it with the orange, you can just kind of soften those lines and blend the colors together. You can do little circles or whatever motion you feel comfortable with. And you can see those lines just kind of disappear as the orange fades into the yellow, it just blends everything together. Another tool that I have is just a little makeup sponge, a little makeup sponge. You can use that as well to soften some of your lines that you might accidentally create when doing this. Oh, hello DJ, good to see you. And Ming from Malaysia, I'm very glad that you were able to catch the live stream too. I know it's probably getting a little a little late there in Malaysia, so I'm glad that you stayed up to join the live stream. Appreciate that. Now I'm gonna start adding in a bit of detail with this orange. If you look closely to the reference photo, 
you have you kind of have a multiple layers of of texture coming through you have uh, the base color of yellow here that we already laid down and then you have these these kind of small jagged lines that go around the eye so I'm just gonna do small jagged lines like this following the shape of the eye on both sides here so just very very small jagged lines not pressing hard at all I'm just gonna go around the eye like this I'm just gonna keep doing this until I get to the center probably fit three or four they don't have to be perfectly in line with uh, the curvature of the eye because they they meet and they crisscross and they're not they're not perfect so don't worry about trying to follow the exact curvature of the eye just kind of uh, roughly in that same direction but that's about that's about it so now we have some of that that underlying texture of the eye I'm gonna come down here and kind of add some texture around the edges as well still a little bit there we go and let's see here I have this other yellow so this uh, this was the 210 yellow and I'm just gonna bring some yellow back up into this area here creating that same texture but instead of following the orange I'm following the yellow up so just bringing some yellow details back up into this portion of the eye there we go How's my standing desk going? That seems to be a popular question. Um, it's going quite well, thank you. Uh, yes, Wendy, uh, Wendy, you asked the same question on Friday's live stream, and uh, the standing desk is going very, very well. So thank you for asking. Uh, now I'm going to color in this pupil, give a ground to this eye a little bit so it starts looking really nice. And I'm gonna start with the blue 430 and this is going to be the top section of the pupil you wouldn't normally th uh, think of a pupil being blue but this is the reflection of the sky in the pupil one of the things that I really really like about this reference photo is the use of complementary colors that the photographer used uh, when editing this photo because obviously this photo was edited um, at least it's very obvious to me so the owl's eyes have really really bright yellow and really really bright orange now the orange complements the reflected sky in the pupils wonderfully uh, this orange and this blue are almost perfect complements to one another and it just adds that really unique visual interest to the photograph and it's going to add that really unique visual interest if you can capture that likeness in your pastel work the other complementary use is the purple and the yellow so purple and yellow are complements I believe I've mentioned that before but if you look throughout the feathers of the bird and especially right here around the rim of the eye there's a lot of purple added to the shadows in this photograph uh, which shows up really really nicely in the reference photo so that's what uh, kind of drew me to this particular image when uh, looking for a reference photo Uh, the next color I'm using is 390. This is a darker blue, and this is what I'm going to use for the foundation of the lower portion of the pupil here. Notice I haven't haven't used any black yet. I'm going to just work with the colors, slowly introduce black to heighten the contrast, but still have nice color in the dark areas. Just makes the 
picture more interesting. If you if you go black, just flat black, it, one, it usually doesn't look as dark, and two, it just looks a little bland if you uh, if you just stick with plain black and you don't add any unique color changes, kind of toning the shadow a little bit. So I'm just going to fill in this bottom section with this dark blue. We haven't even gotten to the highlighting section of this, this eye yet, and there's still plenty of texture to add to it to make it look really, really nice. But uh, even if you were to take some black now and just kind of darken the pupil a little bit, I think a lot of people would be quite proud of how, how nice their eye looks. It looks pretty good already. And that's just the reason it looks, it looks nice already is because of the complementary color. You have this nice blue complementing that orange, and those colors just look really nice together in my opinion. All right. So I am going to grab white now, grab some white, and I'm going to bring out this highlight. It's kind of creeping on the side of this, the eye right here, nice little highlight right there. And then I'm going to lighten up this highlight. So I'm just going to come in here and add some white. I'm doing this, I'm doing this at this stage so that the white sticks on the paper really nicely. Uh, and shows up nice and bright because sometimes if you if you layer too much the white doesn't get as bright as you'd like to see it so i'm doing it now and i'm just going to kind of i'm going to overdo the highlight because it's a lot easier to shrink a highlight than it is to grow one so adding a, a bit more white than you think is safer than waiting and trying to add the white later on. Get a nice smooth curve for this highlight here. Just kind of fill in that space. And I'm going to add some white right here where this blue is meant to be a little bit lighter. Just like that. Let's see, any other? Uh, I'm going to run a little bit of white down at the bottom here, so I'm just going to brush in a tiny bit of white to overall lighten the bottom portion of the eye. Not too heavy though, not too heavy, just to lighten it a little bit. This will give it a bit more of a glass, translucent, kind of a rounded shape just by highlighting this bottom edge but not too much, not nearly as bright as those other highlights, just a little bit. Uh, what brand of pastel pencils am I using? So the brand that I'm using is the Carbothello pastel pencils. Like I mentioned before, the link is in the description if you wanna check them out and maybe buy some. They're, they're fantastic pastel pencils. I've used I've only other, I've only the only other pencils I've used was the Faber Castell Pit pencils, and though I liked the Pit pencils, I found them to be a little scratchy on the paper. Whereas the Carbothello pencils uh, feel like they're a bit softer and smoother, so they they felt less scratchy on the papers than the the uh, Pit pencils from Faber Castell. Uh, this is black now, so I'm just going to use some black to darken up the pupil here. Go over the blue. I'm not going to do too much. I want that blue to still show through, so I'm not going to go crazy with the black. Just slowly add some to darken that blue up a bit. There we go. That gives the the pupil itself a nice rounded shape. Hopefully you can pick up on that, that subtlety on the camera. Pastels always look a thousand times better in person. Um, 
that's uh, that's just the truth of the matter. <laughs> they always look better in person. All right, I'm gonna grab some of that red again. So this is that 330, kind of maroonish, uh, purpley red. And I'm gonna come back up here in the top and add some more of this. Get some nice reds in the top. This pencil is a little, a little broken at the moment, but I think I can manage. Okay, I can no longer manage. I need to sharpen it. Um, that didn't work. There we go. I got it a little bit sharpened. I'm gonna go around the edge again here. Uh, if you like the smoothness, you should try the Gioconda pastel pencils. Uh, they spread like butter. I will have to look into those. I had never heard of those uh, pencils before. How's the how's the price on those pencils? I did I did uh, experiment with the the new um, set of the Rembrandt soft pastels. So yeah, I think it is a I think it's a, about time that I. I branch out my collection of, of pastel pencils, so I'll have to look into that brand. All right, I'm gonna add a bit of red right in here where some of the details of the eye start to come out. And I'm gonna jump back to the, the brown that I used up there, the 640, and just start to add in bit more brown here being a little a little sketchier where I put the brown just so that the, the texture and the details kind of show through now I'm just tapping it adding some little dots uh, you'll see that there's a there's a lot of little dots in the eye here but before I go too crazy with that I'm going to grab the orange because uh, there's some orange that comes up here on the top. So I'm going to take my orange, and this is the 215 orange. Just kind of blend this out a little bit here. Oh, hello, uh, Andrea. Andrea and Olivia, good to see you. Thank you for coming. All right, let's add some orange over here as well, creeping up the side. Just kind of playing with the colors, getting them nice and blended. There we go. And I'm gonna take, before adding any more textured detail, I'm gonna take that dark blue, the 390, and I'm gonna darken up the edges of this top portion of the pupil. Very, very lightly, kind of going over that, that lighter purple there, or that lighter blue, and just slowly adding some of this darker, this darker blue right over top of it, keeping everything nice and soft and blended. Add another layer down here, mixing that black a little bit, 
so it's more consistent. And I'll even add a touch of black to that upper section. There we go. I think that looks good. Let's uh, let's jump over to this purple again. I'm gonna add some purple into this highlight right here, so it's not all bright. Kind of just tapping it, adding little dots of texture. There we go, I think that's good. And now I'm just gonna take this same red, start adding in all those little dots of texture that you see throughout the eye. And this will pretty much finish up this eye here. You can see that it didn't take too long, it didn't take a lot of effort either. It's a fairly simplistic process. It's all about breaking up the layers of texture, isolating the placement of your base colors, and then just slowly building up all the texture and detail that makes the eye look like an eye. And you don't even have to do it all with this color. So let's uh, let's switch it up, and I'm gonna take this brown here instead. Just to add a few little touches of detail with the brown now, and I'm kind of using the uh, the little jagged orange lines that we put in there over top of the yellow. I'm kind of using that as a a guide for this uh, this added detail. Just adding little dashes, teeny tiny little dashes, kind of in the same direction, all pointing towards the pupil. And uh, same thing goes down for the edge here. So take the edge and just kind of bring in a little bit of texture there around the edge because it shouldn't be perfectly rounded. Put in a few dashes there. And let's see, maybe a few more right in this area. And I think I'm gonna take my little makeup sponge blender and tap this area here. Just kind of press in the details and soften it a little bit so it looks a little more natural. So I'm just kind of pressing it into the paper a little to give it kind of a blend. And then I'm gonna take that brown again and add some more dots to darken it up. And let's jump over to the white one more time. Bring out these highlights nice and bright, as bright as we can get them. Maybe a little bit more down here as well.
curvature of this highlight right here is a little bit high, so I'm just gonna use some of that uh, brown, that, four, that 640, to tone it down a little bit, thin it up, just like that. Now I'm going to take, let's see here, I think I'm gonna take this instead of black. So for the surrounding area of the eye, I'm gonna use 770. And you know, this color is kind of like a, uh, a, a really gray purple. That's what I feel like this color is. So I'm gonna come around the edge of the eye. Again, this is 770. Clean, clean up the edge here and set that eye right into the the paper with this nice dark color. This will help the highlights pop out even more being surrounded by nice dark colors. Come over to this side. And instead of trying to do one solid line in a single pencil stroke, in order to get those nice clean edges with your lines, you actually have to do a series of layering with the color. So don't don't try to just go with one smooth line like that because that line won't be have clean edges. Instead, just take your time and work the color up to the edge like this. And take your time. You want to make sure that your eye is nice and round with smooth curves. Any any jagged lines in the in the eye will immediately show up to the viewer. So just take your time. And you know what? This uh, purple, I'm going to creep it right into the top part of this hot this uh, shadow here. So slowly adding some of this purple right here just to darken that shadow. There we go. And you know what, I'm gonna add some of it right here and transition between the blue and the black there. Just add a little bit of that purple there. I think that looks good. Uh, looks so nice already. Pupil isn't round though. Make it round. Yeah, the pupil, pupil uh, has a little bit of a, I'm gonna take black. Uh, there was some dust on there while I was working the pupil and I was afraid to take it down any further. So I needed to get rid of that dust. See, that's what, exactly what I was saying. Like people, people will notice if, if things aren't round. So just take your time with it. There, that's much more round. There's still a little flat side right here, just barely. It's hard, it's, it's hard when uh, I have the camera in my face to make it perfect because uh, I have to draw from such a far distance. Uh, that's pretty close. I'm going to take that, uh, that dark blue, that 390, try to fix this top edge here. There, is that round? That looks round to me. Uh, is that better? Shiny? <laughs> um, hey Will, how do you get to the drawing on your paper? Did you draw it yourself? Uh, and for someone who can't draw, how do you get it on there? So uh, Thea, uh, I talked about that at the very, very beginning of the live stream, uh, but I'll go over it one more time really quickly. So this is, a, this is where I did my sketch. And this is on a regular, cheap, normal printer paper. Nothing special about this paper, um, except that it's cheap, which makes it really great for just doing the sketches of your line art. And then you flip it over, and I use a 6B pencil uh, to darken over my lines. And then I simply place it on my pastel mat. I trace the line using a 6H pencil. The reason I use a 6H is because it's nice and hard. And you don't have to sharpen it or anything. Um, and it you can press with a nice firm pressure. 
and that will transfer the graphite and it will look exactly like this. So that's how I do it. Um, I call that back tracing. Um, I learned I learned that little trick there when I was in the first no when I was in the second grade and I've remembered it ever since then. And I use it all the time. Oh, wrong color. So I'm, I'm jumping back to that dark purple, that 770. And I'm going to continue adding that dark area around the eye. And I'm just going to kind of fill it all in. Right where my line art is. Now some of the uh, feathers are showing up right in this area, so I'm just going to be a little sketchy around those edges where the feathers are. And I'm not, I'm not looking to finish this all the way up to the edge where my tape is. Really, I'm just kind of focusing on the eyes and the beak, and then I'll let it kind of fade out towards the edges. as far as the, uh, the detail and things like that. Almost done with the first eye. Then we can move on to the next one and it will be identical process same colors and everything all right so there is this lighter purple coming in towards this uh, this area of the eye so this is the uh, 642 so I'm just gonna add some of the 642 in here it's slightly lighter purple kind of a uh, what is it a clay rose I believe this color is referred to magical clay rose color I love this color this color is uh, an absolute must for skin tones, just uh, so you know. And let's see, I'm gonna grab some blue as well. So let me, I'm gonna grab that light blue first, so the 430. I'm just gonna come in here and add some, some blue sporadically. And use some of the dark blue, uh, the 390 to just go over some of that clay rose, go over that light blue, kind of blend the colors together. And of course, I'm going to need some black here. So I'm going to go like right around the eye. Get nice contrast. Oh, you're welcome, Thea. And Mang, thank you. Glad you like the way it's looking. I love doing eyes. I've done I've done a number of tutorials on <clears throat> on um, coloring and drawing eyes. Uh, they never get old. They're always fun to do. Uh, I don't think I've ever drawn the eyes of an owl before, so this is this is my first time doing an owl. <coughs> All right, let's see here. I think that's uh, I think that's good. Yeah, I don't really I don't really see anything else I want to add. Maybe a bit of red, a bit of red around the edges. In a few spots, I think. Let's bring some of that red in. I like this red color. There. Yeah, I think that's good. And 
Now, let's jump over to the other eye. We're gonna do the same thing. Oh, hello, Jake. Good to see you. Uh, how do I get the line work on the white piece of paper? Um, so, it doesn't matter. Um, you can you can use the gridding method. You can just sketch it until you get it right. You can trace it. You can use a projector. You can trace it off your TV monitor. Use a light box. Uh, you can, however, is easiest for you to get the line art on to the plain white of plain white piece of paper. Uh, doesn't matter. It's, uh, you can print it out. Actually, that would if you have a. I don't have a. I don't have a printer, but if I had a printer, and it was cheaper to print it than it was for me to just draw it on a plain piece of paper, then I I would probably just print it out, because um, that would be super easy. So uh, if you have a printer, just print it out. Um, so yeah, any way that you can. That's. That's the answer to that question. So how I get it on the the uh, piece of paper, just uh, use use whatever method you find best, because you know there's there's not much controversy anymore regarding tracing. But a lot of people, you know, they have this uh, the, they say that tracing is cheating. But um, in no way is is this a work of art. Um, anybody that traces this. Uh, no one's going to be impressed if you have if you draw this um, so if you were to trace this whether you traced it or drew it uh, the reaction is going to be the same no one's going to care so just use whatever method is, is best for you uh, the yellow that I'm using is the 205 the really bright one just so you know I'm going to just fill it in just like I did last time If you don't have a light box, what I used to do a long time ago, I don't, I don't do it anymore, but uh, uh, to use, uh, what I would use instead of a light box is I would just tape it up on my window. Let the uh, sunlight be my light box. I used to do that all the time, tracing things. When I do large projects, I usually use a projector, though, uh, because, you know, that could be very time-consuming. Uh, taking a sketch and scaling it up onto a large canvas or something like that. But I've, I've done... I've, I've uh, used the gridding method predominantly uh, in my early years. When I learned how to use the gridding method, I used that to scale up all my stuff. Uh, some of the some of the paintings, the very first paintings that I did on my my channel here, uh, I transferred onto my canvases and panels using the gridding method, which was an absolute nightmare. But uh, it works. It works. It really does. It just takes a really long time. And there's no. There's no special skill involved for the gridding method that, uh, you know, tracing would, you know, it, it would just be a better option for, for tracing in that regard. Uh, the next yellow that I'm using is that 210, slightly muted yellow. kind of going over that again here and let's jump over to our orange add some orange now and same thing the highlight uh, highlight kind of wraps around the eye this way it's a little bit a little bit opposite than the other one and there's some orange coming down Just 
using a soft touch here, not, not doing a lot of pressure, just like before. Letting the paper do all the work. Smoothing out the transition between the two colors. Oh, hello, Ko. Good to see you. Yes, I agree. Owls are, are definitely amazing birds. Very, very cool creatures. The eyes, of, the eyes of an owl are just one of the coolest subjects for sure to, to color with pastels. It's, it's nice to finally be uh, getting to, to color them for the first time. All right, let's jump into our red now. So I'm going to add a bit of that red, which is the 330. Just going to slowly build up some of this red here. Highlight right around the edge of the eye. There we go. And I'm going to add that same color around the rim just like before. very carefully, not too wide, I'm trying to keep it thin line so don't press too hard. Uh, do I prefer large paintings or small ones? So I prefer large paintings and I'm referring to oil painting particularly. It's been it's been a long time since I've gotten to play, play around with oil paints. Uh, I do miss them dearly. Don't have don't have the space available right now to to get into oil painting uh, but uh, I always I always really enjoyed working super large um, usually around like one meter by one and a half meters something like that uh, that was like the size I really enjoyed I've only done a few paintings that size I did do a large uh, mural, but that was an acrylic painting. Uh, that was fun, but uh, it's not oil. Nothing nothing compares to oil in my opinion. I love oil painting and I miss it. All right, switching back to the orange, the 215. I'm just going to add a little bit of orange back into this area here. And then uh, I'm gonna, let, me, let me get that highlight touched up a little bit. So I'm gonna, gonna grab the white. I'm gonna just come across here and add some of that white there. There we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it a little heavy because I can correct it with the darker colors. There's even a little bit of highlight right here, so I'm just gonna add some of that there too. There. Now let's do uh, let's do what we did with the orange over here with the jagged lines kind of going around the eye. And I'm just going to start right here in the middle and kind of 
add this jagged line right around the edge, going both directions. That one might be a little heavy, but okay. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfectly round because they kind of crisscross and touch and they're just jagged, so they don't have to be perfect. There we go. I got that nice, nice shape going on. Um, I'm going to take a bit of the white again and add kind of a shine down at the bottom, kind of going up, just like this, just like we did on the other eye. Give it a nice shine down here. Uh, let's jump into the pupil, and I'm going to start with that light blue, the 430. Do this top section first, just like we did before. Make sure my pupil's nice and round this time, so I don't get yelled at again by shiny. Yes, so much yelling. <laughs> there we go. Now let's take that dark blue of ours. That was the uh, 390. Let's do the bottom part of the pupil now. Nice and smooth and round. I'm even going to creep up into the top part a little bit too. And let's do that texture that goes across here. Kind of like reflection of trees and whatnot in the eye. It's like the ground and then the sky. Uh, you're a professional fantasy artist and would love to chat with you on Facebook. Do I respond to messages? Yes, yes, Jake, I do certainly respond to messages. So you can you can message me on my Facebook page and uh, we can we can chat. Let's go ahead. I'm just going to add this dark blue up to the top like I did on the previous one. So I'm just going to do that now since I have it in my hand. And it looks like my pupil is nice and round. All right. I'm going to add a little bit more here. Creep into that light blue. Just like that. Uh, I'm going to grab the white really quick just to add a little bit of sparkle in there. Maybe a few fluffy clouds. <coughs> All right, now grabbing my black, let's darken up that pupil, shall we? 
go right around that edge and just come up here like that. And a little bit on the top. Okay, Chrissy, you have a good night. Glad you're able to stop by and say hi and hang out for a little bit. You have a good night and I'll see you next time. All right, there we go. Let's grab the brown now, the dark brown here. This is the 640. Let's add some, some of this up here to darken the top part of the eye. Get that rounded shape a little bit nicer. Make it three more three-dimensional. There we go. And I'll add just a little bit of it right here to darken that up. All right, now what do we need? We need some more red, I think. Yes, so I'm gonna take the red at the 330, bring in a little bit more of this red here. Okay, DJ, you take care. Okay, let's see here. I need... I'm gonna use uh, I'm gonna use a bit of that clay purple. So that's the 642. Just right in here in the highlight a little bit. Break up this highlight here. Because it's not the right color with the yellow. There we go. And I'm gonna just soften that a little bit with my little sponge brush. There we go. And let's see, let's take that red again. And I think we can start sprinkling in some of our, some of our detail here. So I'm gonna come in here with our little dots, start adding our little dots again. Nice, uh, for the nice texture here. Tons of little dots. Even if they don't show up all that much in these darker areas here, you want to make sure that you slowly transition into them because you don't want them sh looking like they're just popping up out of nowhere. Kind of clump them together, put more dots in a, in a smaller amount of room and it will slowly add a, a darker value to that, that section. So right underneath this highlight, to make that highlight kind of pop out a little bit more, you can just add a few extra dots right, right in that area there around where we place the white and that will just help make it look a bit brighter. And you can do this, you can do this texturing with a variety of different colors just to get different uh, subtle effects. 
So we'll switch, we'll add some of the brown as well. Even though your eye doesn't quite perceive what color these dots are. Okay, I'll try to keep my hand out, I'll try to keep my hand out of the way so you guys can see uh, better as, as to what I'm doing. Sometimes I forget that uh, you don't see it from my perspective. You have a slightly more vertical perspective. so try to keep my hand out of the way. Thank you for letting me know though. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. And if you uh, want to point any point anything out to me, like uh, my hands in the way or something. Also, feel free to mention that. I try to I try to keep up with the chat as much as I can, so I don't make those mistakes. Okay, I'm gonna grab the white again, and I think I'm gonna add a little bit more down here at the bottom, give it a little bit more rounded shape, and then add a bit more, another layer right there in this highlighted section. make it nice and bright and then we use that dark purple which I believe is right here so I'm gonna grab that dark purple which is the 770 and I'm just gonna go ahead and add that that nice contrast at the top of the eye right here there we go and oh, I also added some of it to the pupil, so I'll do that transitioning from the blue and black. So add a little bit of that 770 right in there. And I think that's, oh, you know what? I forgot the, uh, almost forgot the rim of the eye. Don't keep that flat. There's a lot of texture going on right here with the detail of the eye. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna use that uh, 330 reddish color kind of tap in some of that detail there. It's really small lines. It's essentially what I'm doing. Almost dots. Okay, Jake, uh, I'll check my messages right after I finish streaming. Adding just a bit more red, kind of coming down. All right, and then just like before, I'm gonna take the little sponge brush and tap that detail and just soften it a tiny bit. There we go. That just makes it a little bit more natural looking. All right, let's take that dark purple, that 770, do the outline, color in the outline here. Try to get my eye nice and rounded. Uh, these tutorials are really good. The animals are the most engaging and they come to life fast. All look so achievable. Watch the fox again today, and you made it look so easy. Well, thank you, Shiny. I appreciate that. Yes, I, I'm, I'm really having a lot of fun with these pastel tutorials, and I've, you know, I, I've really enjoyed the wonderful feedback from all of you guys. Uh, it's been really encouraging. And uh, if you have any ideas for, you know, what subject you'd like to see me do next. Uh, feel free to comment after the stream uh, so I can remember once I see the comment um, and I'll, I'll try to add those to the to the list of suggestions because yeah I've, I've you know I really really like working with pastels I just got 
uh, actually just before the stream I just got two more packs of pastel mats so um, I have like an endless supply of paper right now uh, to do pastel paintings with so keep the suggestions coming and of course if you're enjoying if you're enjoying the tutorial enjoying the live stream uh, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up so that I can keep track of uh, what you guys like and what you guys don't like because obviously uh, the more likes I get on a video I understand that uh, I did something did something better in that video as opposed to some of the other videos that don't have as many likes and then if, as as always make sure you make sure you share the video with anybody that uh, you think uh, could benefit from the tutorial uh, or wants to get into pastels or something like that because um, I try to make these I try to make these tutorials as uh, approachable as possible so uh, hopefully you guys are, are learning a lot from today's tutorial and uh, what I'm doing is not doesn't seem too complex for uh, any beginner to just kind of pick up and do so uh, that's why I like that's why I like to do the live streams as opposed to you know a pre-recorded video because it lets you guys ask me questions uh, in real time so uh, feel free to ask all the questions you want if there's anything that I do that you don't quite understand um, definitely ask the question because I want to I want I want these tutorials to be very coherent uh, for every step that's why I like to give you the exact pencil that I'm using uh, each time that I change pencils all that so hopefully you guys are getting a lot from the tutorial because um, I get a lot because I enjoy it. So I want you guys to get the most out of it as well. comes down to about right here where my sketch shows at least and comes over here like that there we go now I'm gonna grab that clay rose color again add some of that clay rose that's the six uh, six four two Add some of that in there, and some of it over here. And I'll add some of it up here as well. Take some of that, that light blue just like we did. Add some of the light blue, kind of just a few streaks of it. Nothing too dramatic. Take the dark blue and do the same thing, just add a few streaks of it to kind of um, darken up the clay rose and the light blue there and blend everything out, make it more consistent looking. And then we'll switch, get some black in there. There we go, I think that looks good. Now where's my black? Oh, there it is. So I'm just going to take the black and kind of go around the edges of the eye. Just get that last bit of contrast, maximize that contrast. It's all about contrast, getting getting the eyes to really pop off the pages, you know, ma making everything as contrasted as it needs to be. So just sneak in a little bit of this black here around the edge to make those eyes pop out. There we go. I think I might do a little bit more right in this pupil. Right in the lower part, really get, and I'll even do it over here a bit more. Just get that really, really dark right in there. And 
And you know what? I want to add maybe a little bit of more highlight with the white. So I'm going to come around this edge here. Let's do a, another quick pass with the white. Let's see where else. Maybe a little bit right there. Give it a sparkle. I'm just going to put like a dot, a solid dot right there. In the, I'm going to do the same thing over here. Nice solid dot right there in the pupil. Just, just for the sake of doing it. It's not even in the reference photo. And hit up the edge of this eye here a little bit more. There we go. All right, there are the eyes. Uh, the next bit that I'm going to do is some of the feathers. Uh, actually, I think I'm going to do the beak first. So the beak is a little, uh, a little funny because it's so blue. The beak, uh, if you notice, the beak is actually very similar to the colors happening in the pupil here. So I'm going to start with, I'm going to start with this light blue. I'm going to do the pupil or the the pupil. Uh, I'm going to do the beak first before moving on to any of the feathers. So I'm just going to start with this blue here. and just color in this main part of the beak. Uh, this blue is the 430, by the way. Most tutorials don't say what they are using. It's, it helps so much that you do this. Well, I'm very glad to hear that. I, I agree, most tutorials don't do that, uh, and I think that those tutorials uh, aren't, as, aren't as helpful. One of the, like, one of my uh, my one of my main things uh, when I do tutorials is to explain explain it in a way that I would need it explained to me if I didn't already know exactly what I was doing. Um, and I don't find a lot of tutorials do that. I try not to assume you have any knowledge whatsoever uh, for the techniques that I use or anything like that. So I, I try to keep everything in normal language. Uh, pencil pressure is very obvious. Uh, I, I, I don't try to use any particular artsy words. I, I never went to art school or any, so anything, so I, I don't even know how to describe what I'm doing in an artsy way. So I, I always try to make my tutorials uh, as simplistic as possible so that no matter what level you find yourself at, you can always learn something and follow whatever it is that I'm saying. So that's, that's always kind of been my approach. And the funny thing is, when I started my YouTube channel, tutorials were not the direction that I intended to go. Um, I just kept getting questions on how I do things and eventually, uh, I got tired of typing the answers in the comment section, so I slowly but surely transitioned into more of a tutorial type YouTube channel, and uh, my tutorials seem to be among the, the best tutorials on YouTube simply because of the way that I am able to articulate my process. and. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even have known that uh, I was able to do such a thing without all the feedback that I've gotten over the years. So really, I have to thank you guys. Uh, the next color that I'm using is going to be the dark blue that we use, and that's the uh, 390. And I'm going to kind of start with the outline here a little bit. Uh, the nostrils kind of come right in this area, so I'm going to outline the nostril really quick, like that. And over on this side, like that. And then I'm going to outline the beak, like so. And just kind of fill in this this area here where the feathers start to come in. And I'm using a really light layer because I want to keep it very noticeable for me 
where the beak separates from the bottom part. So this is the lower part. So I'm just kind of sketching this in to fill it in really quickly. Uh, and then I'll continue working on that. But I want to focus on this top part first. So I'm just going to kind of outline it. And the, you don't usually outline things, uh, but in this case, since I'm just working with base colors, uh, I find it to be acceptable. And now the, the lighting, I'm going to start establishing the lighting by slowly layering this uh, dark blue here onto just one side. And you kind of have to find yourself ignoring all those little scratches. <coughs> Excuse me, I need some water. You guys got me talking like crazy. There we go. Now that now I'm all better. Um, so you have to kind of ignore all those textures and white marks that you see on the reference photo until you get a really nice base layer for your colors here. And I'm just focusing mainly on the blues and the contrast and the lighting. So the next part of blue, so this top part of the beak here is, is a little, little bit lighter. So I'm going to kind of start to shade this this area here and we have you know don't be afraid to fill it in don't be afraid to use this color and, and fill in the beak here uh, because you know we're working with pastels so they're friendly they're forgivable we can make mistakes and correct them a little bit if we happen to go too dark we can add some more of our, our light blue over top of it to correct that stuff Yes, well, I, I appreciate uh, you sending people over, Anna, very much so. You're, you're a good friend, I appreciate it. Hopefully, uh, hopefully soon, uh, on, Anna and I can make our way up to Finland and say hello to all your adorable dogs. I didn't forget, I did not forget about a trip to Finland, so... Need to, you need to start preparing for that that trip. I've, I was actually have been talking to my wife about uh, getting getting out of Poland. I, I keep telling her that we need to get away for a little bit, take a little vacation outside the country. I'm, it's probably warming up a little bit up north there right? Uh, it's really gotten, the weather has really gotten better here in Poland for sure. I don't know what happened to spring. We just kind of skipped the spring and went to, went to summer. It was like 24, 25 degrees today. So it was super nice. Of course, I stayed in the whole day working, preparing the live stream for you lovely people. All right. So I got uh, I got a good portion of this beak here mapped out. You can st you can start to see the contours that's that are occurring here. Uh, now that I have that a little bit clearer, I'm going to darken up this section right here. Quick shout out to slugs for doing everything a snail does without a helmet. <laughs> Uh, you kill me. That's funny. All right, let's come back up here. I'm going to add some of this dark blue around this edge, the top part of the beak where some of those feathers start creeping in.
same situation in I or uh, same situation in Iowa, uh, where last week it was ten inches of snow, and then now, yeah, yeah. I uh, a lot of my friends and family back in the states, uh, in Ohio in particular, um, was having all kinds of crazy, interesting weather where it would be like a spring day and everybody would be out and like light jackets and t-shirts and shorts and then the next day it'd snow um yeah it was uh it was very very interesting and it, we had some of that here in poland we had a little bit of that weirdness here in poland as well all right i'm gonna grab white so this is just white, and I'm gonna come around right here, add this white. It's quite light right here, so I'm just gonna add that really quick. And just scribble in a bit of white right there. Uh, let's take the black. I'm gonna take the black and fill in the the pupils, or not the pupils, I don't know why I keep referring to the pupils, uh, to the nostrils right, right in here. Let's get those put in. Start looking more like the beak of a, an owl once I get those nostrils put in. And I'm going to take the black down here at the bottom now. And get the dark part put in and kind of have it creeping up right in through here and then it slowly just fades into a dark blue black. So I'm going to put a light layer of the black, again light layer, barely barely pressing into the paper at all, letting the paper do all the, do all the work. And we'll probably add a little bit of the purple color a little bit more of the dark blue just to kind of blend it all out. I'm going to add some black down here underneath, give it more separation. A little bit over on this side as well. All right, let's add some more black right here. And some black around the edges where these feathers are coming in. I think I might just blend that out. So let me grab a blender here real quick. I'm gonna use a, a small blending sponge. I'm just gonna soften that, bring those colors into one another. And I'll do the same thing with the beak here. Just let those colors all blend together. There we go. A little bit down here. All right, now I'm gonna take the light blue, fill in some more of this with the light blue. That we, we get it all colored in, leaving nothing white. Uh, do they make the handles longer on the sponges? Uh, I don't know if they do for those little makeup ones, but uh, this is the one that uh, I would probably recommend just going for. Uh, I got this. I got this in the pack of sponges, so. Sometimes it's just nice to have something a little smaller triangle shape to just get in there with some of the details. But I suppose you could uh, just take a straw, take a straw and like uh, put it on there and tape it or something if you if you really wanted it to be longer. All right, let's grab our dark purple now. So this is the 770. Let's add some of our, some of our dark purple here. Bring in our purple color. P 
pan pastels. I think uh, make larger blenders for them. Oh, that yeah, that's quite possible. I you know I just bought a pack of them. I didn't really look around for anything in particular. And like I said, I, I think I got those ones in just the regular set of pan pastels. So I don't even think I bought that individual one. Um, kind of I've kind of lost track at this point buy so many art supplies and never know what I get and when. I have a bunch of stuff. Actually, I, like I said, I got a package today and I think I have like three more in the mail and I don't even know what's in it. Every time I, every time I get a package in the mail, it's like Christmas because I, I forget what I ordered and when I ordered it. So there's just a constant, um, there's, there's just constant deliveries, uh, to my flat because I'm constantly ordering art supplies and uh, funny thing uh, is the uh, little mail place uh, building that's like outside it's just it's a really brief walk away from my flat uh, the the guy and the girl in there they they have become so familiar with me coming in to pick up packages that uh, they don't even check my name anymore. Like I just walk in there, they see me and they like throw me my package. <laughs> like that's that's how many packages I've gotten that the people in the little mail room over there, they know me. Just they see me and they they know my name so they can just pull my package right off right off the shelf. Add a little bit of this purple in with this light blue. It's it's a bit too light, so I'm just gonna mix in some of this purple here. There we go. And let's go back to our dark blue, which is the 390. And I'm just gonna add some of this right over top of that light blue area. Up sponge again and just blend it out. Just blend out that texture. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. I'm going to take the light blue, just add a line right here, kind of a highlight. I think that that works out well there. Now, um, I'm going to take the black, uh, see did I miss anything else? Oh, hello Steve. Yes, better late than never, but glad to see you here. Alright, now I'm going to start adding in some texture. It's basically just, I'm going to use the black, just add some scratches and some dots and random random textures here because that's what the, that's what the beak looks like how long have I been streaming for hopefully uh, uh what time is it oh, okay I got I got a little bit of time a little bit of time throw in some feathers after we finish this beak the the, the hard part's done the hard part's done totally totally done so it's all it's all fun from here very very easy like I said I'm not gonna do any real uh, real uh, finicky detail in the feathers I'm more the the tutorial was mainly focused on the eyes uh, the beak is just a plus because uh, I know that it can be kind of difficult to do this kind of detail uh, like the beak and stuff and not really know how to approach it because there is a lot of texture going on here in the beak uh, so hopefully, uh, hopefully you learn something here with the beak if you already perfected eyes. 
So I'm just gonna come in here, darken up some of the shape and add some texture, some little dots down here. Kind of work my way up. Lots of little dots. And then we'll switch to the white. Actually, I might switch to the dark blue again and do some of the texture with that. So let's jump over to the dark blue, the 390. Let's just add some dark blue dots instead. And there's a lot of kind of crisscross looking texture here. So I'm gonna do some really light coat of this blue and kind of cross hatch it to help build some of that, that texture. Olivia, you watched my first live stream. Yeah, uh, the nerves, the nerves are one hundred percent gone for sure. Uh, I'm definitely, I'm, I'm actually, I'm almost more comfortable drawing on a live stream than I am just drawing by myself. I've gotten so used to drawing on the live stream that I, I almost prefer it. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun just hanging out, and you know the funny thing is. I can't stand it when people watch me draw, uh, like in real life, because I have this really weird anxiety that when I'm sitting, when I'm sitting, I can't, I can't stand it when people are standing, but by me. So if I'm sitting down and somebody like walks up and stands by me, it I can't do anything. I freeze up. And this doesn't have to pertain to like drawing, uh, like if I'm sitting in the kitchen, which never happens, but hypothetically, if I was sitting in the kitchen and my wife were to walk in and stand there and try to talk to me, I can't do it. I'd have to either tell her to sit down or I would have to stand up to, to tolerate the, uh, the interaction. I just, when, when people stand next to me, when I'm sitting, uh, I just, I can't do it. It, it just drives me absolutely crazy so random fact about me I cannot stand it when people are standing next to me when I'm sitting all right let's take some white now bring out some of this highlight right here some of these little specks of white a little highlight right there on the edge bunch of little dots up here uh, hello metal Horta uh, good to see you I am doing fantastic thank you for asking glad to see you in the live stream So some of this texture in the beak here doesn't quite make sense. So just draw what you see in the reference, but uh, try not to overdo it. Keep your lines nice and short and it will work out. So there's the beak. The beak is done, yay. Now I'm going to grab some soft pastels and let's see, which color should I start with first? I think I'm gonna start with a gray. So I'm just going to grab a light gray and I'm just going to come in here and kind of fill in some of the the light the light spots. Some of this light gray. And I'm just going to I'm going to be real sketchy with this, so just keep that in mind. 
not trying to get any specific detail with this color uh, and with this this part of the, the drawing. Like I said, focus was on the eyes and special treat with the beak. So I'm going to add in this gray here and over here a little bit. I'm going to grab the white, do the same thing. So let me grab white. Actually, I'm going to grab this off-white kind of ivory color instead. Coming up to the end of today's tutorial, so I hope that you guys enjoyed it as much as I did, because this was a fun project for sure, and hopefully you learned something. If you did, be sure to give the video a thumbs up so that I know. And uh, feel free to comment after the stream on what project you'd like to see me do next. some light brown. Let me see here. It's a nice uh, kind of peachy brown color. I'm going to start with this first. Let's fill in some of this uh, darker brown stuff really, really quickly. Like I said, I want this part to be loose. So I'm really just kind of scribbling. And let's take some darker brown. Let's take, uh, let's take some of this, yeah. Right around these edges here. A little bit down here. All right, let's blend that out. I'm gonna use this blender here and I'm gonna start with the lighter stuff first and I'm just gonna kind of blend it in the direction that I colored it. Blending my little scribbles. Now that I have the light stuff, uh, let's work on the middle. So let's go into this kind of dusty brown, peachy color. All right, let's just blend it all out. You are very welcome, Marigold. Lady Marigold, I'm glad you enjoyed it. And Mandy, I am, I'm glad to hear that I inspire you. That is very, very nice to hear. So thank you for that. All right, let's, let's grab some purple. I'm gonna grab this purple. It's a bit bright, but okay. Light purple right in this 
this area here. A little bit right there. Some down here. Yeah, I think that's I think that's enough purple. Alright, let's take a bit more brown, I think. A bit more brown. Get some of the contrast. Even though we're being loose, we still want the contrast. If you can, you can be loose, and if you get the contrast, then you'll be in good shape. So that's what it's all about. Get those, get those dark colors in there, and everything will, will look good. And just kind of scribble up some of that right there in the middle. And I'm just going to loosely blend that out. Purple looks good in that in that brown. I like the way that purple works. And I'm just going to kind of bring all the colors together, I think. Then if you want, you can take some of the pencils at this stage, add in some, some nice texture into the feathers, bring out the details. I think I'm going to add another layer of color first. Yeah, I'm going to grab some white, some actual white this time, and I'm going to come in here and just to add some bright touches. Kind of like that. A little bit down here. And I think that's good for the white, so let's just blend that out. Blend out the white. Yes, the purple, the purple definitely brings out uh, a, a unique depth, and uh, you wouldn't think about adding the purple, really. But like I said, the one thing that I really, really liked about this, uh, this reference photo was the way the photographer edited the photo. He brought in a lot of purples into the shadows of this, the, the image, uh, and it works really nice with the eyes because the, Purple is the complement to the yellow, and I kind of go over that in the beginning. Uh, but yeah, the, the purple brings in a really nice look to it all. All right, time to grab some pencils again, and I think uh, I'm going to start with... Uh, where's, that, where's that dark purple? All right. Uh, yeah, let's start with the 770, and I'm just going to loosely... Uh, build up some some texture here just kind of around the eyes focused around the eyes a little bit I'm just gonna draw some lines and 
the, the main important thing here is direction. So just uh, pay attention to the reference photo in the way that the feathers are kind of flowing and uh, it will work out. It'll work out good. So let's see here. I'm gonna add some right in here. Just kind of loosely. Like I said, not going for uh, super realistic for the, the feathers here. So I'm doing it kind of quickly. So just keep that in mind, keeping it kind of sketchy. I'm not gonna do too much, just want some of these textures to show through a little bit. And uh, I'm gonna call it a day, because I think uh, quite satisfied with the way that this came out and hopefully hopefully you guys are too if you notice a, a lot of the texture goes a bunch of different directions so some of the feathers kind of just cross each other like a crosshatch kind of texture all right let's go to this eye over here up here and then we'll grab we'll grab some other colors to throw in here I think that will finish it up really really nicely all right let's do hmm. yeah let's do right here around the beak I think that's good there. Let's see, what other color should we add? Uh, I like that clay rose color, so I'm gonna grab some of that clay rose. And just throw some of this in here, kind of randomly. This this clay rose has a bit of purple in it too. It's kind of a, a muted uh, reddish purple. So this is this this color works out nice to bring in a little bit more purple, some variety there. Throw some of it in the middle right here. grab that add a little bit more of that dark purple right in here it's kind of scribbling it in it's all about direction it's all about direction with these lines um, let's see I want to throw in some of that light blue uh, some of the reflection of the sky and some of these white areas so I'm gonna bring in some of this light blue real quick Just bringing in all the colors that we've used so far just helps uh, helps balance out the image when you're when you're doing a more loose style uh, bringing in all the colors just helps balance your color choice throughout the image that way everything looks a little more natural together And let's do some white now, I think. I think it's a good time for some white. So I'm just gonna come down here, do some cross hatching, some of that, that loose feather texture. And 
and then right around the eyes let's bring out that that fluffy that fluffy kind of uh, eyelash look there so pay a little bit more attention to the direction here because it's very important to get this correct don't want it to look off so directionality very important very crucial for that section of the eye do some some flyaways I guess not too long so don't uh, don't go crazy with the, the flyaways there bring out some loose feathers there we go uh, in the center And then this side as well. There we go. A little bit up here. The eyebrows, nice and loose. And then for the forehead, if you notice the pattern is really jagged. So I'm just going to do some some jagged, almost like uh, you're drawing little shoots of grass. Just like that, going back and forth, like rows of grass. That's kind of the pattern that it makes. There we go. Let's see, is there anything else? Yeah, there's a, there's a few whiskers showing through. So let's just add some whiskers, some like loose strands coming down. Coming across like this. Some shorter ones coming up here, little black hairs. Don't want to miss those. And darken up, darken up around the eyes, maybe a little bit right here. Maximize that contrast, very, very important. All right, everyone, uh, I think that I think that finishes it up. Nice, loose, finished style really captivating eyes. I think that was the point of the tutorial there. But uh, again, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned a lot. Um, hope you had fun. Hope you had as much fun as I did. Uh, remember, if you did, uh, if you learned something, if you enjoyed it, if you want me to continue doing this, just give the video a thumbs up. Comment below if you have any suggestions for future tutorials, of course. And uh, make sure you share the video so that uh, other people can learn from it and I can continue to grow my channel so that I can continue to do this for a living. Uh, it's because of all of you lovely people uh, that I am able to do this professionally. So uh, thank you all so much for your support and uh, I appreciate it. Uh, I have my social media links below in the description along with the line art and reference photo for this. So if you want to take a, a look at the finished product of this, a nice photograph. Uh, I will show you that uh, over on Instagram or Facebook, so go follow me there, and I will see you all next time. Take care. Peace.